Hi, everyone. Andrew from Remote Tribe here. I'm, I'm happy to bring you another podcast with our special guest, Moa Bosanab. Um, Remote Tribe is a blog and a community for digital nomads and global citizens. We help people travel the world and work remotely, but we also help them with advice on immigration, visas and citizenship. So uh, I've been I've been a digital nomad for seven years and uh, I've been in the game for a while. And we're trying to give you as much information as possible now about the news on the um, e, the new EU visa for non-EU citizens. Um, and I'm here joined by Mo, who's an, an immigration expert, and I will let him introduce himself. And we're going to talk about a, a few, quite a few changes happening around the world on the on the visa matter. So Mo, go ahead. Hi, Andrew. Um, thanks so much for inviting me back to the to the podcast. Um, my name is Mohammed Abu Shanab. Uh, you can always call me Mo, an international uh, lawyer, global expert, and, and digital remote worker for almost 15 years now. And um, we always help digital nomads and global citizens and expats in different countries optimize their uh, tax affairs, building a global lifestyle, uh, getting residency and citizenship in other countries and know the news about what's what's happening into the uh, expat uh, lifestyle in the coming, like, say, five to ten years from now. We have a very interesting topic to discuss today, and uh, it's uh, it's been a pleasure always being here. Yeah, thanks, Mo. Thanks for the intro. So, indeed, there's some really interesting news coming now from from Europe, actually. So, from 2024, the Americans traveling to Europe will need to uh, to have other entry requirements, um, especially in the Schengen zone. So, can you tell us about what's going to change for American citizens from next year when traveling to Europe? Actually, it's not just for the Americans. It's, it's the, the most people who are asking about this question is the American citizen, but it's it's not just for Americans. It's it's for everyone who travel to the Schengen area visa-free, but they need to apply for a visa before traveling to the Schengen. It's called ETIAS. It's a special program that's been implemented. It's not been implemented yet, but it's been announced uh, by the EU Commission. It's it, it actually been announced a couple of years ago, but it will be implemented next year, 2024. The idea behind it that you need to fill a form, a kind of uh, visa online. You need to fill a form with your information, uh, with your passport number, with your citizenship, uh, which country you are heading, and a, a couple of questions before, and you have to pay a fee. It's an automated system, so there's no, you can say, there's no denying uh, it, it will be automatic approved, but you have to fill the form unless you're not be able to board the plane. So it's a procedure that, that brings money to the EU countries, to the EU budget, basically? That's that's one thing. It's not just about bringing money, but it's just uh, automating travel between the non-visa-free countries. It's eliminate the need to stand in front of immigration officer when you land in the EU, and they ask you a couple of questions. They ask a couple of questions before you take or board the plane. And it's valid for a couple of years. That that's the thing. It's not just for Americans. It's for anyone who considers that uh, the the country is the third country that doesn't need a visa. And this is including Canada, U.S., U.K. will be including, uh, unfortunately, uh, many uh, many like Singapore, uh, um, Australian, New Zealand, Japan, many all the 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 countries that enjoy visa free uh, to the Schengen area will need to apply for this special uh, new e-visa before traveling. And, and, and do you have to apply every time you fly in, in the EU, for example, for like a few times a year, or like can they allow it for several years, this type of, of visa? The announcement is say it would be valid for two years. Okay. So it would be multi-entry or multi-trip entry to the EU uh, zone, Schengen area, and you just need to pay the fees for the, for the validity of the two years. And for each passport holder, if you are traveling with the family members or kids, or friends, whatever they're them, each one of them have to apply separately. It's by mm -hmm. the passport number. It's linked to your passport number. If you have a yep. couple of passports, you have to use. Um, uh, if you have a couple of citizenship, you just need to apply which one that you just use one. You don't need to apply for each passport that you have. All right. And does this mean we're going to see um, shorter waiting times at the border and less bureaucracy or more? What do you think? Yeah, it will be fully, you can say, that's that's the next stage of traveling. It will be fully automated. Uh, you, you just fill the form, fully you pay the fees before, yes, 
and then and then when you're boarding the the, the airplane uh, they will be now that they, they will check that you already been approved and then so it's 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 make the life much more easier uh, pe- I mean, people now, especially American citizens, complain now on Twitter and, and different social media that this is a hassle. Why are they are doing this for us? I mean, actually, the U.S. have doing have been doing the other way around for almost 25 years now, and no one complains. Exactly. Now I think they they got a bitter taste of uh, what the Europeans were, had to had to go through. Uh, yes, but there's a lot of difference between the the U.S. system and the EU. We can go into still. more details about it. Uh, but this is this is how life is going in the in, in the next five to ten years. So then, how about the visa on arrival? What's going to happen with with that mo for for people arriving in the EU? Uh, actually, I mean, let's let's take an example. I'm John. I'm an American citizen. I'm just have a U, a U.S. passport. I'm traveling to Europe right now. I don't need to do anything. I just I just take the plane. I arrive. I land. I speak with immigration. Uh, uh, officer when I'm landing to which country in the Schengen area, he asked me a couple of questions, whatever he waive my passport or he just let me uh, use the e-gates, depending on the situation. That's kind of approval to get into the country. Now this approval will be done before you even thinking about traveling. So the authorization will come before you you just fill the form and pay the fees. That's So they will change the authorization process, not in the country, it will be outside the country. And this is changing for the status for the e-visa from, from uh, you can say, uh, after departure approval, it's before depo- before arrival approval. I understand. And does this mean that you're not going to get asked when you land in the EU just going to the e-gate and scan your passport and you're in Schengen? Or? Yes. That's okay. technically, technically. What, what should happen. They promise. That's, yeah. that's, that's the system have been done in, 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 in other countries in a smaller scale. The... the, the People traveling to the EU, that's the, the largest number of destination that people travel all over all over the world. So any changes that will, will, will affect millions of travelers, that means that, that uh, we should have to see it in action to see what kind of implications. I'm just giving, trying to give insight and tips from, from my experience with other countries here. And is there a website where people can apply already? Is it live? Can, can we see anything? Or... No, actually, it's not. It's not live. It's it will be live next year, summer twenty twenty four, and it will be very simple. Just EU uh, website that's controlled by the EU Commission itself, and you have to apply. You choose the country. I can tell you, it will be similar to the uh, when you travel to re- during the, the lockdown of the COVID times. You need to get authorization that you have to prove your whatever vaccination or uh, COVID test you have. It will be similar to this but much more less uh, complicated. Uh, complicated, yeah. And is there a cutoff point? So do we have an exact date or month when they want to make this live? Um, I, I, the, the announcement will be summer. So it will be should be the 1st of July or uh, June next year. Yeah. All right. All right. And, and is this, um, so is this uh, entry requirement now, is it that valid for UK, Canada, Australia, all the non-EU citizens then? Yes, it's 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 not just for the American citizens. It's for all. It's for thirty plus citizenship holders, including uh, U.S. citizens, uh, Canadians, uh, Australian, New Zealand, and, and the U.K. They might be. There might be an agreement between the U.K. government and the EU to make it very easy for U.K. citizens to travel back and forth from the EU because it's it's like it will make life easier for them. For the UK citizen, because they have to ask now, and they are, they have to stamp, and they, they it's a very you can say non digitized process, but um the they might be that UK citizen will not be happy to pay the seven euros or whatever the fees that they they might have an agreement because it's um the the there's another um thing that what will happen to um people who are traveling from Ireland to the UK and then the EU. Or there is a lot. You can have a very special status. It's a third country now. The rules say that any third country that need to apply using the system, but we don't know how the UK 
will, will react to, to such they, they might get a special status as usual because the, the things are pretty complicated with Ireland and Northern Ireland. And uh, um, it's been like the UK and, and Europe had a historical relationship for a long time. Yes. And, and they, they still have to keep those connections, in my opinion. So probably they'll get like a special status or ex exemption there. We'll have to see. Hopefully they will, because it, it would be best for both parties, mostly for the UK citizens, I would say. Um, there's a lot of uh, commerce between the two, a lot of traveling. I mean, it's almost in Europe. It's almost on the continent. You've got the Eurostar trains and uh, a lot of merchandise between the two countries exchanged. So uh, hopefully that, that will happen, because otherwise everyone will lose, I think. You never know. They might, they might be like... Um hope from the sky that the uh, the UK will rejoin the EU in different ways and we will not need all these hassles for a British citizen to travel back to the EU. Indeed, indeed. let's see. We'll, we'll wait about that. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. So um, what else more? I think, I think we had something else on the agenda on the... Um, uh, so just to clarify something before that, so this this type of new requirement will allow U.S. citizens to travel within the Schengen area. That's what we know so far. And the Schengen area is not all the EU countries. So Schengen countries are 20, 23 out of 27. There are four countries which are not in Schengen at the moment, and we don't know if the U.S. citizens will be able to travel with this kind of visa inside the non-Schengen countries. So the non-Schengen countries are Bulgaria, Romania, Cyprus, and I think there's a fourth one more I'm missing. Ireland. And Ireland. So yeah. just keep an eye on that and keep an eye on the news because we don't know exactly what's going on there. However, you do will you will have access to 23 countries in Europe which are have a great quality of life and you can enjoy them to the fullest. That, that we, we still don't understand about the implementation itself. They might be that these four countries will uh, will have an agreement and they will allow people with, with, the, with, the, with the visa Schengen. arrival or ETIS yeah. to access this country, to make them much more easier because it will be pre-approval and it will eliminate the, 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 the traditional way of getting a visa. Or might they say, no, we have to control our borders. We still, we still have to approve people man manually at, at our airports here. Yeah. Yeah, so for all the Americans viewers and the Canadian viewers, we have a lot. Just have a look at the, just Google ETIAS, and you're going to get all the news for that. And keep an eye on our channels as well. Keep an eye on Twitter and, and LinkedIn. Um, and just keep, keep an eye on the process. So as you go towards uh, next summer, um, just just make sure that you, you do have this, uh, you know, application before you leave. Um, because it, it's happening, it, it's pretty serious, so you, you will have to apply. Cool, cool more. So I know there were a lot of changes recently. Um, other countries are doing similar uh, changes to their, uh, you know, uh, entry requirements. So what can you tell us about like Canada, UK, Australia? Seems like the world is realigning at the moment and it's, it's really good to know all these things. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, mostly the, the large countries that have an immigration or visa on arrival, whatever, it's a pre-approval or after approval, they are digitizing the whole process. Um, we can start with, with Canada, as Canada already approved new countries to, to travel to the Canadian for the first time, visa-free, including um, uh, Arab country, which is called Morocco. They allow uh, also Thailand nationals to travel. That's, they, they try to make it much more easier for citizens of, uh, of different countries to travel visa-free uh, visa to, uh, to Canada. And I see um, the also implementing, uh, you can say, a kind of uh, nomad digital, oh, sorry, you can say uh, so, nomad, uh, digital nomad so, visas, yes. a kind of. It's not, it's not similar to the ones in, in Portugal or Cyprus or Spain, but it, it, it's, a, it's a kind of implementation. They try to attract as much as remote workers. They don't have a good weather all the, all the day, but they have a very good infrastructure. People can extend their stay. They can. This is, could be a way of getting a permanent resident and then the Canadian citizenship. So Canada is playing by the rules on the visa of arrival to attract as much as highly talented workers to join the workforce. That's one thing, for example. In the UK, they announce uh, a new visa on arrival system uh, for the oldest GCC countries in the Middle East, uh, that's including United Arab Emirates, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, Oman, uh, and um, uh, so that's the six countries. And they also allow visa-free access to Jordan, starting from next year also. 
to access the UK without getting a visa. And that's the same thing. Um, I can tell you that Canada is doing the same thing. The UK is doing the same thing. They're looking for highly talented, you can say, not just worker. UK is doing this visa-free access to allow people to come to the UK to go business, the shopping, and they use it as a way to attract you can say we'll see individuals to invest and 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 use at the UK as a travel hub from the for for there because all these countries, um, mostly of them, excluding the United Arab Emirates, doesn't get any visa free to the EU, so they can travel to the UK visa free. That will be like um, um, you can say an amazing step for all of them. That will allow travel and business between the other countries. Thing uh, one other thing also, if you see. Um, that that mostly the system in Canada is uh, instantly approved. There is no someone to approve the your application. But if you compare it with the, with the system that have been implemented in the U.S. for almost twenty years now, it's called ESTA. E T S A. Uh, it's a very similar name to the European one. E T I S A. Um, the 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 American one. It's completely different. It's allow thirty three nationals. Uh, from from different countries, including the UK, many in the EU, many in Asia, um, and they have a special agreement with some countries that to get visa free to to the US, but it actually it's it have to be approved manually. When you apply for the first time, they don't have a record for you before. Some an officer, an immigration officer, or the CPE in the, in the US have to go actually and check your profile and do. Uh, they might be approved instantly, or they ask you for more documents, or they can refuse you, and they say there's no refunds here if you pay them. It's almost fourteen dollars or fifteen dollars US, and they ask you, sorry, you have been denied the the ISTA, and you have to apply for a visa from the US uh, embassy near you. So that that's a very strict system. Uh, compared with the EU one, which will be instantly approved, and there is a system in the in the middle, which is the Australian one. Um, it, it, it's visa free, but you have to apply, they fill a form, they ask you more questions, but it takes more time to approve. And that's the slowest system. It could take up to a couple of months until they approve you. Uh, if this were the first, um, you can say visa request to to go to Australia, uh, New Zealand have a similar system. Also, it's have an app. You just scan your mobile. Uh, they approve you, but take more time. So it's it's when it take more time, that means they have to check your profile or check your application firstly. That's not an automatic approve. That's the difference between uh, the visa on arrival, uh, the pre-approval. It's manually checked or automatically checked, and that's how the world is going right now. Some some of these um, applications or some of these permissions allow you to stay up to six months, which is which is uh, that that's 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 a trick. Because, I mean, mostly visitors think that when they apply me, they approve me to stay six months, so I, I can stay six months. That's the maximum number of days you can stay inside the country, but don't abuse the system. If you abuse the system, you can be denied, you can be flagged, you can be uh, even banned if you try to use the system over and over again. And so it's not, a, you can say, a backdoor to actually live in the country. It just, you have to very specific at what you're doing. Um, and understand the rules and regulation for what, what is allowed and what is not allowed. You can say copying the same system. They try to have an agreement between their member states or they, uh, you can say, similar. There is, if you if you go through all this, there, there is more, um, as you mentioned, the country is trying to attract as wealthy or whatever they are, tourists and individuals or businesses, but also that allow others to come and see that the country is if this is a possible way that I can extend my stay, I can buy property, I can invest in this country. So it's a way of making it much more easier for everyone to uh, to travel and see different places of the world. I mean, when I, mean, I think the world now have no privacy, especially after the the, the, the lockdowns and the, you've given up all your information to travel. When 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 you used to travel and provide that you are vaccinated or not vaccinated or have, uh, you can say uh, a test before you provided much more information. The visa information that they ask is much less. They they ask about the destination, the number, the passport. It's a kind of automating the whole process from A to Z and, and make it much more easier for everyone. Yeah. There is no reason if you have a, a different passport or different nationality, there is no re no reason to declare that you hold a, 
owed another passport unless the government asks you for. For example, if you're applying for any kind of visa interaction with the U.S., they have to know how many passports you have. They might deny you, but some uh, in the EU, you don't have to um, um, provide such information. Yes, yes. Yeah. Always remember the EU, to get an EU about investment or residency, it's it's one of the most complicated and sophisticated one. Yes, you can, you can, there's, there's more restrictions apply, but if you would like to do something, just have a plan of it, how much time I can invest, how much um, I need to stay, the residency options. It's, it's, it's a long process, but if you would like to do it, uh, it's, it just, it just, you need to have a plan. That's, that's my advice. Here. If you, if you have any a complicated situation, if you would like to ask any more questions, or if you would like to suggest a topic uh, that we we talk about it in our next uh, video or podcast just feel uh, feel free just drop us a comment and we'll be happy to uh, discuss it in the next um, episodes